Praise God, praise God. This is Prophetess Deanna Dixon. I pray that you are having a blessed day in the Lord. I know I haven't been doing the days of the fast, but I have been putting out videos. So I just got to go with what God says in all things, right? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So basically today is the day 18 of the 21 day full liquid fast slash Daniel fast. We started on a full liquid, but I wanted to kind of switch it up in case anybody, you know, got weak or whatever the case may be. The thing is to equip you to succeed. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. God is not going to um, help you fail in any area of your life. So if you had to switch over to a Daniel fast, whatever it takes, or even if you had to adjust your fast, like from doing liquids from 8 to 12 p.m. or 8 to 1 p.m. or even 7 to 3, however God tells you to do it. Always just shift. Don't never just stop. Don't never just give up. Always flow. Because guess what? In this hour, in this season, you better understand one thing, and I'm going to keep it real. Hallelujah. So God bless y'all. Y'all know I, I, I just, when I fast, the anointing just be so, so there's nothing else to say. But I will say this. In this hour, that's what you're going to have to do. Y'all going to have to fast so you can last. Somebody write that in the comments. You're going to have to fast so you can last. That's why some people are getting weak. You're sitting up there trying to do it through your own strength. You cannot. This is a spiritual war. I'm going to say it again. This is a spiritual war. So I got on here to encourage you. There are things that are going to happen that God is going to allow. You cannot get dismayed. You cannot get discouraged. You got to keep on going. God, what do I need to do to adjust? Come on, somebody. The first thing when people get hit, this is what they do. They get mad. They say, God, why me? Or they try to justify. No, no. You know what you do? God, thank you. I thank you for this test. I thank you for this trial. I thank you for the problem because I know what your word says. You see, let me tell you something how Jesus won. Jesus spoke the word. We want to get on the phone. You want to gossip. You want to do this. You want to speak the word. Because when you speak that word in season and out of season, it has to, it has to. Let me tell you something. That word is a sword for real. You know how they call the Bible the sword? That's what it is. It cuts through stuff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It backs up stuff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It stops stuff. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody playing with the devil these days. Come on, somebody. It is time to be strong in every area of your life. And my reference scripture, y'all already know, my favorite scripture in case you ever just want to know, Joshua 1, 8 and 9. And this is so true. You know why this is my favorite scripture? I have read that Bible back, front, front, back. And I'm telling you, I look for one scripture that just, just put it all together and start what we're supposed to do. And this is it. This was the one I found. Joshua 1, 8 says, this book of the law, the Bible should not depart out of thy mouth. Are you listening for real? But thou should meditate therein day and night. No, you don't get to just read the Bible on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And, no, no, no. You have to meditate on that Bible day and night. Notice what he says. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So wait a minute. If I don't meditate on that Bible day and night, I may not get it right. I may not be strong enough. He, it, it tells it right there. For then thou should make thy way prosperous. That lets me know I'm going to have opposition because he said I got to make my way prosperous. That means I got to force the kingdom of God suffer violence and the violent take it by force. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. And then thou should have good success. So you understand what God is saying? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Verse 9. I mean, Joshua, for those that are just joining, Joshua 1, 8 and 9. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Come on, somebody. Do I have to spell it out for you? You got it. And it's a command. Now, it wasn't part of the Ten Commandments, but he said, Have I not commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. I don't care what you go through. I don't care what God allow. I don't care what it is. You have to find that inner strength, that second wind. And the only way you can do that is by fasting and praying. And come on, somebody, abstaining from touching the unclean thing. Guess what? And that's another thing, too. Quit letting people break your spirit. Don't be around people that break your spirit. I'm not doing that these days. Come on, somebody. You don't like me. You ain't got to worry about me. Oh, come on, somebody. How do you? Because guess what? You can go way over yonder. Go run alone now. Go play somewhere. Hallelujah. You didn't hear what I just said. You want people that's going to feed you. Because whatever you feed on, that's what you become. You feed on gossip, that's what you do. Drama, that's what you do. But if you feed on positivity and you watch your gates, what gates? You know, your eye gates, your ear gates, your mouth gates. You have to protect everything. How do you do that? Watch what you listen to. Watch what you look at. Come on, somebody. Now, I'm telling you right. You don't let everything just hit your spirit. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. So let me read verse 9 again. It says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid? The enemy got everybody 
I'm going to tell you something what the enemy did. He think he's slick. And I'm going here. Well, I'm going here. When he started killing black men, starting with Trayvon Martin and all the rest of them, what y'all think that is? And I'm going to say it plain because I ain't scared of nobody. And I'm going to tell you how God said it. And I've been saying it. I'm going to say it to the, to the day. Those are hits. And you know what that was to do? That was to, to put a murdering spirit out there. And, and now they want to kill each other. But those were still hits to make people afraid. I, I could be driving. And, and, and if a cop come in the vicinity, I see my brothers kind of like, because they don't know what's going to happen. No, that's not how you do that thing. You hold your head up. Because whatever happened, hallelujah, whatever you do, God allowed it. And guess what? I'm just going home to be with the Lord. Y'all got to start acting like that, talking like that, walking like that. I got my shirt on. It's time for true Christians to walk it like we talking. Ain't nobody playing. Nobody scared to die. What? I'm going with my father. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. I ain't got time for y'all. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You ain't going to scare me. Hallelujah. And that's what they need me doing, even with this coronavirus. I'm not saying adhere to the laws of the land because the Bible says give Caesar's what is Caesar and they straight up Caesar. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. But give God what is God's. God says, I've not given you the spirit of fear, Timothy. I've not given you the spirit of fear, but of power, power, love, and a sound mind. That means, no, 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 no. You can't just throw me anything. Come on, somebody. And even if you try to get me, hallelujah, you understand what I'm saying? Because the enemy is in hot pursuit in this hour. He's trying to put people in fear. And fear cancels your faith, said the Lord. So you cannot get in fear. Come on, somebody. I don't care what happens. Hallelujah. This stuff is real. Now, let me read verse 9 again. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be dismayed. There are things that's going to happen that's going to hit you to the core of your spirit. It could be a friendship, a relationship, a loss of a job, a loss of a family member. It could be anything. I understand sadness. I understand going through. But don't be dismayed. This is the way I've handled. And it was very hard for me, especially being attacked by my family because I couldn't go to the funerals. My dad going through something up here. I had to make a, I had to make a wise decision, but not only that, a God decision. And so not going, I never really got to finalize and to grieve not going to my, and, and you got to understand, we, this were close people. This wasn't just, you know, lay family members. This was close to me. And I, I saw something trying to overtake me. And I said, no, 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 no. I said, because God knew everything. And I just started getting in that word more, fasting more, trusting God. God, I trust you. I don't know why you allow what you allow, but you God, and I trust you. That's how you, I, you don't get dismayed. Because guess what? When you get dismayed, what you're doing is blaming. God, I don't, no, no. God, why? God this, God that. No, no. God, you're God. I trust you and I love you. And even though it hurts, though you slay me, yet I will trust in you. I believe in you. I'll keep my faith full in this hour. Brothers and sisters, the enemy is after your faith, which is your confidence, which is your spirit. And he's sending people to try to break your spirit. He's sending things to try to break your spirit. He's doing, he doing the same thing he did, Job. Go, go on, he's the accuser of the brother. Um, what about this one? What about that one? And God said, go ahead, test her, test him, but touch not their life. This stuff is real. And sometimes them tests to get you to the core of your spirit. It'll make you want to act a fool. It'll make you want to cuss somebody. It'll make you want to get out of character. It'll make you want to, hallelujah. And that's why you got to calm down. God, what should I do? God, give me the strength. Because I'm going to tell you right now, they talk about women getting, everybody getting emotional lately. And that's not of God. Calm down. God, keep my mind, keep my mouth. <laughs> Y'all you, you know that. Because when you're emotional, you say things and do things that you know you wouldn't normally do. So come on, let's talk about it. Hallelujah. That's not how women, men and women of God are supposed to act. There has to be a spiritual maturity and a spiritual authority that go hand in hand. Come on, somebody. It's a balance. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want to get up on here and encourage you. It's not over. I know things, people have lost jobs, people have lost homes, people have lost so much. Can I tell you something? And I mean this, and I'm not saying this, you know, because it's, it's, it's good for, it's, it's kind of like, if somebody hasn't lost anything, they can talk like they're all happy or whatever. You've talking, you, I'm talking, and you're understanding that this is a person right here. I've lost so much, but I've gained so much as well. In a loss, there's always a gain. It might be wisdom, it might be discernment. 
It might be a closer walk with thee. It might be for you to examine yourself. She's so busy look at what happened, not understanding. God, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to tell me? What are you trying to improve in me? What are you trying to draw out of me? Because I guarantee you, if you go in and not out, uh, and let me explain that. When things happen, the first thing you want to do is you want to react. But you're supposed to go in the inside. God, keep me. Come on, somebody, go in your prayer closet. Start getting in your word. I'm going to tell you, and I'm so serious. Most people in this hour, they're not getting in their Bible. I told y'all last night, they're running after money. They're running. Because here, here's the deal. Most people are survivalists. Especially the ones that when we weren't saved. We make it happen, Captain. Any kind of way, what you want to do. Y'all know it's true. You can't act like this in the kingdom of God. Because then if you run in it, then that God, you bind God hand. Because now you ain't trusting in God. Hallelujah. So if you really want God to move, you got to assert all your authority. God, I give it to you. I surrender all. I surrender my life, my will, my spirit. There it goes. What you want me to do? And the first thing people say is, well, I don't know God's voice. He speaks through his word. You get in that word and you start meditating in that word. And that word start coming out of you. And you'll hear that still, small voice. Hallelujah. That's how you get close to God. And then fasting. Because what you're doing is you're sacrificing your flesh. You put, you're pushing that plate back. I, I don't want, no, no. Because guess what? It's sacrifice. Let me tell you how the world does it. The world say, have fun, fun, fun. And God say, sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. He said, those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. The enemy always want to keep us in the flesh because, you know, the flesh are mess and they cannot please God. The Bible says the flesh that cannot please God. So when you're in the spirit, you start hearing things you ain't never heard before. You start seeing things you've never heard before. You start walking that thing. You start walking in your calling. You start walking in your destiny. You start walking in your anointing. And if we are truly saved, men and women of God, your anointing needs to get heavier, not lighter, honey. The only thing supposed to get lighter is your flesh. Hallelujah. Because if you fast, some weight should be coming off. Hallelujah. Let's be real. Let's be real. Hallelujah. So I want to encourage you. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare back down. Because I could feel it in the spirit. I, I, I'm on the way to take care of some business. And God said, I want you to encourage them. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if you feel lonely. I don't care if you feel down. I don't care if you experience loss. Start praising them. I dare you. God, I praise you for what I have, what I don't have. God, I praise you. I, I, I just start praising them. Worship and praise is two different things. Praise God, yes. But worship, that's what you're really trying to get you. God, I love you. I love you, God. I adore you. I serve you. See, praise is with our mouth. Worship is with our actions. It's with our life. You, I ain't got to show you because you can see it. I worship him. Let's be real. Can't you tell somebody that's been with God? It's written all over them. It's in their speech. It's in their walk. It's in their talk. It's in their spirit. Hallelujah. It seeps out. That's, that's, the, that's the key. You want to go deeper, but hold on. You have to stop looking at TV like you're doing, gossiping like you're doing. Whatever you feed on the most, that's who you are. And the enemy, I know how to, how you play with mind games. He'll send a man to distract you. He'll send a woman to distract you. He'll send a thing to distract you. He'll send this to distract you. And most of the time, you don't even know it's a distraction until it finished distracting you. Come on, somebody that just said something. Or oh, the enemy think he's slick. Or oh, he think he's slick. I be seeing him come a mile away. So I, I keep my grass cut low. So when them snakes pop up, I say, yeah, I say, yeah. hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I just pray that you are encouraged. Get in that word, that word, that word. I can't tell you how. And not only that, I'm telling y'all, one day you're going to look up. My God, my God. And they're going to be taking them Bibles. And we're going to, you know, when something taken away, it's just like life. When you have it, you take it for granted. I'm just being real with you. But when it get taken away or something happened or something alters, you be like, oh, man. I'm telling you right now, people of God, you better read that Bible while you have it. Get that word in your heart for when these days come and they will come and you can't stop them. It'll be on your heart no matter what they take in the physical. Hallelujah. If you're hurting, you need healing in your heart, your mind, your soul. I suggest you get in that word, 
follow somebody that's Bible believing, hold on, and living it. Because I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of them believe the Bible, but they don't live it. Oh, don't play with me. And you could tell with the way they walk and talk. No anointing. Yeah, they have power for preaching. And, and I got to tell you all this distinct one, the distinction between the two. Anybody could power for preach. Heck, one of y'all could do it. I'm going to be honest with you. All you got to do is just start practicing. But the anointing, hallelujah, that's something you can't practice, honey. You can't buy, honey. You can't get off the internet. Oh, come on, somebody, hallelujah. That has something that is made. You got to spend time with God, time in his word, time in worship. You can't fake that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm going to pray with y'all before I leave. And I always have my oral. Let me tell y'all something. And I'm so serious about this. When I started selling this in 2014, 20, so many people, and they still come against me. They be doing all kind of stuff as if they don't know me. If it's not a God, I ain't doing it. So anywho. God said, even when you die, Deanna, everybody remember the power of this anointing oral. I'm telling you right now, keep yourself anointed in this hour. This is where we at. 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 Let me tell you, and this is scripture. And also you can Google it for those that don't know your Bible in Revelation. When they destroyed the world, the angels, they can't touch the oral and the wine. Read it, it's in Revelation. They cannot touch the oil and the wine. That's how powerful it is. So I always put it on my head. And I just put a little bit. I don't do a lot. I put a little bit on my ears. Because I don't know what people are going to try to put in my ears. And I and I don't know why I'm doing this. But maybe for somebody that's trying to go to the next level. This, this is what I teach my, my students. I spray something in my right hand. And I'm going to show you something. This God. This God. Because I wasn't going to do all this. Because I didn't even know why I brought that on the oil right here. Okay. So I rub it. I place my right hand over my belly. And I do this every day, every day, every day. And I place my right because the Holy Ghost is housed in your biblical card, your umbilical card. And I, and I say this prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, burn up everything that's not of you. Let it be a two-edged sword. Everything that is of you, ignite God. Ignite the fire in me, the desire in me, the gifts in me, the destiny in me. Strengthen me, God, in Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name. Amen, amen, amen. Hold on. Don't pray that prayer unless you're ready. Because that's what's exactly what's going to happen. Because you're going straight to the housing of the Holy Ghost. Well, how do I know that? Oh, I'm about to, I didn't even know I'm about to do all this, but I'm about to. When a baby is born, and God showed me this. Nobody taught me this. God taught me this. When a baby is born, they cut the umbilical cord, right? Because they're entering into life. It's a detachment from the spirit and the human. But just because it's a detachment doesn't mean this is where the Holy Spirit. That's why everybody's not supposed to touch you in your stomach. That's why it feels funny when you play with your, with your um, umbilical cord, with your belly button. That's why it feels funny. Hallelujah. That's why he says, out of your belly... Rivers of water shall flow. You're not supposed to let everybody touch. That's why some people want to pray over you. Make sure they are anointed. Mm -hmm. Only if they can activate. This is activation, what I just did for every last one of you. Those that want it. Hallelujah. Yep. Yeah, that's what it was. Hallelujah. So now let me go ahead and pray over you. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come boldly to the throne of grace, God. Just thanking you, God. Just thanking you, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I just pray for every brother and sister, those that are listening and those that will listen. Oh, God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you help them mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, emotionally, God. Oh, God, keep them, protect them, check them, inspect them, Father God. Correct them in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that can, they continue, Father God, to walk mightily before you. Oh, Father God, that the gifts are stirred up, Father God. But also, Father God, that they examine themselves to please you, Father God, to worship you, Father God, to desire you, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh, I come against every plot of the enemy i serve it to the root of that thing hallelujah in the spirit god oh father god we come against every plot every plan every hex vex curse father god that people have spoken spell god in the name of jesus we come against that thing and we serve it to the root of that thing in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i decree and declare it to be so as a prophet of god Oh, Father God, I release peace and joy and strength, God, like never before. Oh, God, stir up your people. Keep your people. Protect your people. Revive your people. Let them thrive like never before in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and declare it to be so. 
Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus and I draw a bloodline. I draw a bloodline over their minds, their souls, and their bodies, God. Oh, Father God, strengthen them. Blow a fresh wind, a fresh wind, a fresh wind on them where they've been worn and torn and tired and frustrated and even afraid, God. Oh, Father God, heal their hearts, those that have lost people through violence, Father God, or anything, Father God. Heal their heart, their mind, their soul, their body, God. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, I say this prayer will not be hindered, stopped, or blocked, but will accomplish what it was sent out to do. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth's name, amen, amen, amen. Let me tell you something. Prayer is powerful. You cannot stop prayer. If you start praying, when you get up, when you get up in the morning, you're supposed to just look at Facebook. When you get up, God, I thank you for waking me up. What should I do this day, God? Lead me and guide me. When you get in your vehicle, I don't know why I'm teaching like this this morning, but I'm going to quote the flow. When I get in my vehicle, Father God, in just the east, the west, the north, and the south of this vehicle, I say this vehicle will not be used against any other vehicle, and any other vehicle will not be used against mine. No accidents, no incidents, no Im premature deaths in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I decree and declare it to be so. Y'all better start praying like that because guess what? There's a demonic assignment to take us out. A lot of people say, well, that's too much. That's what happened to the church. We stopped doing too much. We start being um, uh, swag and, 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 and cool and all this stuff that's not holy. Hallelujah. Y'all know it's true. Let's be real. Y'all know it's true. Got to go back to the oracles of God. We wonder what's the problem. We love God as a whole. We love God. We got to go back to the standard. Go back to the foundation. Go back to basics. Come on, somebody. Where you know how to respect each other, love each other, even respect each other calling and quit trying to compete with each other and quit getting on Facebook and TikTok and all the rest of them. Stop that foolishness. Because I'm telling you, this this is the year of hard exposure. I'm telling you what does say the Lord. I'm going to say that again. This is the year of hard exposure. Do you know what hard exposure is? God is not even talking to you no more. He's going to just pull them covers back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what's happening. Because he tired of people playing with him. You see, he had already did soft exposures for the last two, three years. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. We're in hard exposure where, he, where he's not even told you to stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. So God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless. I love you all through Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stay strong. Y'all thought I was going to say stay black. I know it. I know it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>